How would the U.S. military fight North Korea? As tensions continue to mount on the Korean Peninsula with no side backing down, the U.S. has threatened a massive military response to any potential North Korean nuclear attack. But what would that look like? The U.S. would likely deploy large groups of its Navy and Air Force to Japan, Okinawa, and Guam to bolster military presence there. A Stratfor analyst told Business Insider that they'd also possibly maneuver submarines and ships closer to the north and target nuclear facilities through airstrikes. Helicopter-deployed buoys would listen for North Korean submarines, which could then be destroyed by more advanced American underwater craft. Experts reckon the U.S. would not invade, but rather defend South Korea as the North Korean army charges the border. This scenario would also see U.S. Special Forces parachuting into strategic locations around Pyongyang for surgical strikes. If, in the extremely unlikely scenario, North Korea strikes Guam or another U.S. territory or ally with a nuclear strike, the U.S. has the option to respond via land, sea, or air. Most agree that the resulting American retaliation would lay waste to Pyongyang and kill thousands, if not millions. Or, you know, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump could just simply step into the octagon and see what happens. Keep watching for all the latest on the nuclear-armed hermit kingdom. South Korea creates Kim Jong-un decapitation unit. While South Korea's presidency is in full-on crisis mode after President Park Geun-hye's impeachment last month, the country's military is reportedly working up a hit squad with the sole purpose of taking out Kim Jong-un. Known as the Decapitation Unit, the crew would sneak solid snake style into the north during an event of war and then begin to eliminate the DPRK's wartime command. How they plan to do this is anyone's guess, but going by the name, we reckon it involves heads rolling, yeah? The unit would be part of a kill chain operation. If war happens, this would see Seoul deploy anti-missile defenses and a preemptive military strike against Pyongyang. North Korea's military might. With tensions ramping up on the Korean Peninsula, perhaps it's time to assess just exactly what kind of heat Kim Jong-un is packing. According to The Telegraph, North Korea is believed to have more than a thousand missiles of varying ranges. North Korea's short and long-range missiles can strike South Korea and Japan. Washington says Pyongyang is also developing a missile that will be capable of reaching the continental United States. North Korea is estimated to have enough plutonium to build as many as six nuclear bombs. Experts say it will take North Korea up to 10 years to fit a nuclear warhead to a missile capable of reaching the U.S. North Korea is believed to be able to make most kinds of chemical weapons. South Korea says the DPRK also has biological weapons, but it is unclear if they are ready for the battlefield. Military service is mandatory in North Korea for men and women, and the army has more than a million troops. The army relies on outdated Soviet tanks. The navy has more than 70 submarines and three frigates. Most North Korean Air Force planes are outdated Chinese fighter jets, although it does have a small number of more modern Russian-built jets. The cyber warfare threat from North Korea is centered around an organization called Bureau 121, which boasts up to 6,000 hackers. Most of its attacks are targeted at South Korea. So that's the kind of hardware Kim Jong-un has at his fingertips. Let's just hope he brings an end to all this military madness before people get hurt. Everything you need to know about North Korea's latest nuclear test. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un took a break from not pooping at the weekend to make some boom boom. Big boom boom. On Sunday, September 3rd, North Korea conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear test at the underground Punguri nuclear test facility. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the underground explosion resulted in a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. Estimates put its explosive yield at 120 kilotons. For comparison, the little boy bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 had a yield of 15 kilotons. The recent North Korean test was eight times stronger than that. But it's just over a third of the power of the recently tested U.S. remote-controlled nuclear bomb, the B-61-12. That holds a maximum yield of 340 kilotons. Meet the Castle Bravo. This had an explosive yield of 15,000 kilotons when it was tested in 1954. It's the most powerful American bomb to ever be tested, but it's not the strongest. This is the Tsar Bomba. This Soviet super nuke was tested in 1961 and had a blast yield of 50,000 kilotons. 
That's 400 times stronger than North Korea's latest test. But don't think that makes the North any less dangerous, because turning a test bomb into a deliverable nuclear payload is quite the challenge, and it looks like the North might already be there. There is speculation this weekend's test bomb will form the warhead component of the Hwasong-14, North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile. This ICBM can reportedly hit Alaska. Over the weekend, the United States threatened a massive military response against the use of such a weapon against the U.S. or its allies. Interestingly, President Trump is considering stopping trade with any country that does business with North Korea, aka China, because without the People's Republic's support, the North Korean regime would collapse. Err, uh, so where exactly is Guam? North Korea says it will soon be ready to launch missiles that will land near Guam as tensions ramp up between Pyongyang and Washington. Guam is located in the western Pacific Ocean, around 2,100 miles from North Korea. It is within the range of North Korea's medium and long-range missiles. The 210-square-mile island is a U.S. territory. It has three U.S. military bases, including an Air Force base that hosts B-52 bombers and fighter jets. Some 6,000 U.S. troops are stationed on Guam, which has a total population of around 162,000 people. Guam is protected by the U.S. Army's THAAD missile defense system, which is designed to shoot down ballistic missiles. According to state media, North Korea's military is waiting for approval from Kim Jong-un to fire four rockets that will land in the sea about 17 miles from Guam. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump has warned Kim's regime that any threat to the U.S. would be met with fire and fury. How to stop a North Korean missile? Let us count the ways. The U.S. and its military allies in Asia are preparing for a potential North Korean missile strike at Guam. The U.S., South Korea, and Japan have several lines of defense against North Korean missiles, including the Aegis and THAAD anti-ballistic missile defense systems. North Korea plans to launch four missiles at waters near Guam. THAAD systems in South Korea could track the missiles by radar, but would not be able to intercept them in space on their trajectory to Guam. The trajectory of the North Korean missiles may also carry them past Japanese Aegis ships in the Sea of Japan. However, U.S. Aegis ships stationed in the Western Pacific would stand a better chance of interception. The last line of defense is the THAAD missile defense system on Guam. The system has a good record in tests, but has never been tested in a real-world scenario. One other option is to allow the North Korean missiles to hit their target and fall into the sea. If Japan or the U.S. shoot the missiles down, things could escalate with North Korea. If the Allies fired and missed, however, it would send a strong signal to North Korea that U.S. and Japanese anti-missile defense systems don't work, which may embolden Kim Jong-un's regime.